So I've actually been already racing the World Cup since 2009 and having seen firsthand how much the sport has changed, where the courses have come and where they are now, it's becoming a lot tighter, more tactical, the laps are a lot shorter. So the training for the future of the sport is the most important thing because things are changing and happening so quickly. Another amazing advantage of being in Tucson is you have access to group rides Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Um, Saturday being the famous shootout, and that's basically like an unofficial race. It leaves the university area at like 7 a.m. You're usually freezing and you have so many layers on, so it's an early morning and you usually get, you know, 120 kilometers in before noon. roll out of town together, but then when you hit the outskirts of town, everyone just goes batshit crazy. It's completely strung out, it's now no longer a group ride and it's a full on road race and you're just like doing everything you can to prolong where you get dropped. It's important now to make sure you ride in a group setting often enough that you're comfortable with being in a tight environment. Um, usually the pace isn't the pace that you want to be going at. Um, it's usually more enclosed, it's tight, it's moving around, it's kind of uncomfortable. Uh, but that's a realistic race situation and you have, to be, you have to be comfortable with doing that in order to perform. Oh, my legs hurt so badly. One guy was like, it lets up as soon as we get to the top of this hill before it hangs right. <laughs> As soon as we hung right, it was like, what? <laughs> yeah, you just have to ride home for the next 60K and have 100K in by 9 a.m. <laughs> Tucson offers a variety of, of different kinds of riding and um, different trails, you know, from big rocks and boulders to, to kitty litter, um, where, you know, it's really unpredictable and where you're just fighting so hard to keep that wheel from washing out. And, you know, just the combination of them all is really what keeps you a really well-rounded rider. The greatest things about being in Arizona for the winter months is that I actually have access to be doing these technical aspects. So when we get to a race, it's not like I've just come off the rollers for four months. My honest feelings for the Olympics this year are mixed all the time and always changing. The ultimate goal is performance and bettering that day after day after day, at workout after workout. And you know, from time to time, the ultimate goal, it does get blurred. So at times it is hard and I do struggle. When training is going good, life is good and you know, you're super motivated to get up and, and go crush another workout. But then some days get tough. Uh, and I've experienced that a lot this off season actually. But ultimately the gold Olympic medal is, is what I've been dreaming of for so many years. mornings I 
wake up and you know the body's feeling good, feel great on the bike, and everything just kind of comes together. We need to be good at every single kind of terrain out there, and usually your hometown doesn't offer that big of a variety, so it's important to come to places like Arizona and just like hour after hour after hour, keep training on them so you're super fluid and fast and efficient on this kind of terrain. holding the line really well. I'm really noticing like wherever you point your front wheel is, is like exactly where it goes. There's a lot of advantage for training in the heat. You know, the heat itself, like you're, you're building your plasma volume just being on the bike in that heat. And we have to race in some really, really hot conditions. The importance of technical training long before you get to an event is crucial. The race courses are getting more and more technical, so you need to have those skills already in the bank. You need to know what you're doing. So when you get to an event a week in advance, you're not stressing about how you're going to do an obstacle. It's just a matter of memorizing all the fluid corners and what's coming up next rather than stressing over each individual technical section. I believe the, the finer details is what makes performance on demand actually happen. Like showing up to a race like a full week in advance you're actually on the track the days you should be on track rather than trying to cram and being tired right before the race. We do have like this magic number that as soon as I get that amount of laps on the course then suddenly things have all clicked, come together. I'm riding so fluidly, so much confidence. I have it pretty well memorized so I'm able to just focus um, at the task at hand when I'm in the race itself. Race tracks are getting shorter, so now we're doing like four kilometer laps, sometimes even less. I've noticed there's a lot less climbing nowadays. It's becoming a lot tighter, the, the laps are a lot shorter, so they're really trying to enhance a shorter, more visible circuit for spectators and fans, and ultimately it makes better racing, and it's, it's exciting for the racers being out there because you could be halfway through the race, you're in the lead pack, and things just drastically change from one lap to the next. Not and everything. There's a, an amazing sustained. <laughs> Damn it! Super. <laughs> <laughs> I know how hard I hit your head. I just hit that jump and I cased the landing and all I was focused on was Liam, the cameraman on the ground. And I have a Charlie horse quad because I hit his head so hard. And 
that dramatically improves my... Oh, I don't even know still! So you straight line from A to B and that dramatically improves my riding out on the course. Another one? Another one? <laughs> Question?